And so for the back panel pieces, we're gonna do it the same way I did it on the Craftsman Pie Cupboard. We're not doing anything super fancy with it. Again, this is something that's gonna live up against a wall for 99% of its life. You'll only ever see the backside when you're moving it, but I wanna make sure that's got a nice strong back panel so that these drawers don't just slide right through. Because I'm expecting, especially with a young kid around, these things are going to get bashed in and out, and especially against the back panel here, they're gonna get hit against there a lot. So I wanna make sure the back panel is as strong as possible. And so if you guys remember the way we did it on the Craftsman Pie Cupboard was to just do a bunch of individual slats. That way if one breaks, it's super quick and easy to replace that single slat. And so for this process, we're gonna be using basically two thirds of this big board here. And so the reason I chose this board is because it's seven and five eighths inches wide, which means I can get at least two sections of my back panel from the width of this thing. So that means just in this top section alone, I can get eight of the pieces that I need, which just means that I have to scrounge through my scrap piles and that to find the nine. And so I've talked about this before, but anytime I'm resawing on my bandsaw, I don't use the fence that's included with the bandsaw. I just find that it doesn't work very well, in my opinion. Uh, your mileage may vary, again, depending on the quality of the bandsaw you have and all that. Uh, but I just find that it generally doesn't help uh, with resawing unless you have very square stock. And so one of the big problems with resawing, or when you're trying to get a book match panel, anything like that, is you want to try and keep your material as thick as possible. In this case, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be taking these all the way down to a quarter of an inch. Uh, we've got tons of material to play with and we're going to be putting a lot of effort on our planer to get these so thin. But in most cases when you're resawing, you want to try and keep those pieces as thick as possible. And so what I found is anytime I tried to use the fence, I was very dependent on getting a perfectly square piece of stock in the first place. I had to go through the full milling process on the initial piece of stock, which then ate up a lot of thickness that I could use later on. Whereas if you do it freehand, like I'm gonna do it here, all you have to do is, is joint one square edge, and then you already know that because I ripped this edge off on the bandsaw here, I already know that it's perfectly perpendicular to this edge, which means, and to one of the faces here. Again, whichever one I use to reference on the jointer will be perfectly perpendicular to the other one. So it's all mostly milled up properly. And so all I'm gonna do here is I just marked a line with my marking gauge, one from each uh, each side, which then gave me a nice centered column down the whole width of this piece. I then went in and filled those lines with pencil so they're easier to see when I'm actually cutting out the bandsaw here. So the trick is to keep the bandsaw blade between those two pencil lines all the way down.